This is a great example of how arithmetize as a strategy can creep into geometry questions, okay? So we're told that we have these triangles that are similar, but we have no sense of what these triangles look like. We're not told that they're right triangles or equilateral triangles or anything at all. But I'm going to make them right triangles. And that's because if I'm trying to find the area, I do know from the reference chart, but also from my memory, that area is equal to one half base times height for triangle. So the, the key for that piece, for that formula, is that the base and the height have to be perpendicular to each other. So if we have a right triangle, that's really convenient because when we have the two legs are by definition going to be perpendicular to each other in a right triangle. For any other triangle, if we kind of tilted that right triangle, we might need to draw an altitude. So this is a bad example. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to show it to you what I mean, right? If I wanted to make this the base, I would need to draw a height that goes through the triangle here to make a perpendicular. And so that can be tedious because then, you know, we're splitting the base up. We might need some trigonometry to know what's going on. So some of you might draw random triangles here and kind of understand what's going on based just on that, on just like the, the you know, most intuitive triangle you can have in your mind. But kind of planning ahead a little bit, we can draw triangles that make some sense. So let's draw ABC and DEF. And ABC is four times the side length. So ABC is the big one. So let's do that. Okay, so this is A, B, C, and so D, E, F is going to be a little shorter, but same basic shape, right triangle, right triangle. So um, what they're saying then is A, B, C is four times the corresponding side length, and I know the area of this is 270, meaning that the area uh, is going to be, since area is one half base times height, uh, I know that 270 is equal to that. So let me just kind of work it back here, right? So the first thing I want to take care of is let's multiply by two. So that way we can get rid of that one half, right? So 270 by two, regular calculator, 270 by two is 540. So what I'm going to do to make my life easier, because I know that I can't just divide 270 by four. I know it's not going to work, right? So a trap answer here is something like a uh, trap would be 67.5. Um, that way too easy, right? You can't, there's no way that they're just going to make you divide by four and that's it, right? So something else is going on and the SAT loves with geometry to kind of confuse us between dimensions, right? The, the lengths of sides are not going to kind of work the same way as the areas or volumes of whatever shapes those sides make up. So you got to got to do the hard work and, and show it. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to pick some nice numbers for my base and my height. How about I get a base of 10 and a height of 54. Um, though that's kind of messy if I want to divide by four, but you know what, I have a calculator, who cares? So let's just do it, 54 and 10, right? So those two dimensions would give me an area of 270. There are lots of dimensions that would do that. So I'm. this is why this is an arithmetize, is I am making up a triangle based on what I want to do rather than based on the instructions, right? The instructions only go so far. I want more specifics and I'm okay with that because I'm following the rules in the question, but I'm still making up a triangle basically that satisfies those rules in the easiest possible way for me. Because now when I want to find the area of DEF, I actually have dimensions that I can change according to their instructions, right? ABC is going to be four times the corresponding sides of DEF, meaning I can take 54 and divide it by four, and I'm going to get some numbers for DEF, and let's just do that, 54 divided by four, is 13.5. So like I said, a little messy, but not a big deal, 13.5. And if I do the same thing with the 10, right? So 10 divided by four is 2.5, yes, 2.5. Now I can just plug points into equations because I, I have an equation, area is one half base times height. So area is one half, the base is 2.5, the height is 13.5. Let's let the calculator do the work. So 0.5 times 2.5 times 13.5, is 16.875 and this, this bothers me a little bit because technically that is too many spots to put into this um, this answer thing here. So we, we can just round it. We can do 16.88. I believe 16.87 would also be um, acceptable. Um, I'm curious how Desmos is going to do that though. I'm curious if I can turn it into a fraction. Six, 16. 0.875 fraction, 135 over 8. That'll go. That'll go in. Yeah, because that's five spots. 
one, three, five divided by eight, that's five things. So that'll work. So if you wanted to do it as a fraction, that's what it would be. But you can't do a mixed number. You can't do 16 and then some fraction. That has to always be either an improper fraction or a decimal. Mixed numbers don't work in this spot. But there you go. That to me is um, the best way to do this to ensure that we don't make a mistake and we fall for a trap. If you did point, put 67.5 as your answer, go ahead and throw a comment down there. I won't embarrass you, but it's good for people to know how tempting an answer like that is. Uh, but we know, especially if we saw this question on our test, it wouldn't be number three. It would be much later in the section, right? So we would know that there's more to it than that. There is no way a hard question on an SAT is going to involve just dividing a number by four because we have a calculator. There's no work to be done there. there it's gotta be more in depth than that. So it's very important to prove your answers, not if you have a hunch, great, but we gotta prove it, we gotta see it. And in this case, by arithmetizing and making up some triangles to actually work with, I was able to see things much more easily and the trap never really became tempting to me.